Today, we're talking about things I hate about programming. Yeah, look, I'll be honest with you. I don't have too much experience programming. I'm still a newborn child in this field, but I've still experienced some problems, okay? I'm hoping these problems will go away with more experience, but based off tweets and videos from more experienced developers, and you can't create the button because Bill is on f It sounds like these problems are gonna get a lot worse, so uh... One, documentation. The thing developers both love and hate. Documentation is kind of like how I feel about caffeine. I hate it, but I need it to function. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about useful documentation that does what it's supposed to do, you know, making my life easier and making me feel like an absolute genius because they know how dumb and incompetent I am and writes everything down step by step. No, 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 no. I love that type of documentation. Here's some documentations I like. OCaml. OCaml mentioned. Let's go. Rust. Stripe. View. And there's a lot more. If you're an engineer or an open source contributor that helps with documentation, I just want you to know I love you. All developers love you. We don't appreciate you enough. Without all of you, technology would never be the this advance, we'd still be eating rocks. Now, unfortunately, not all documentation is good. We call those the documentations of agony and despair. Documentations that are outdated, that leave you with more questions than answers, or documentations where it's just the code itself with comments. I understand that reading documentation is a skill that you have to develop. Documentation back then used to be a lot worse. I can't imagine what that used to be like. But that's like saying we upgraded from getting stabbed to getting punched. Technically, it's better, but we can still do better. Here, let me give you an example of a documentation that gives me the pain and the agony. Google. Number 1.1, Google's terrible documentation. Yes, Google. You know, the tech company that's worth over $2 trillion and has thousands of developers that get paid high salaries, the one with fun company perks, the ones that rejected my resume. Take a look at this documentation for their Gmail API. Let's check out the quick start. Enable the API, seems reasonable. Configure OAuth consent, okay. Authorize credentials for the app, all right. Create an API key, we're getting somewhere, I think. Set up the sample, okay, what's the sample? What is this? Where's the syntax highlighting? Why do others have it and others don't? Oh, it's an edge case because this is HTML. No, 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 shut up. Their interview process literally tests you on problems where you have to handle edge cases. I don't want to hear any complaints. Look, I know this isn't a big deal. I mean, some people use the program in Notepad. Actually, I think some people still do. But remember, this is Google we're talking about. Now, here's the interesting part. Most of the code here is to sign in and sign out with Google, which makes sense to be fair. But this is the actual code that uses Gmail. You know, the whole reason I'm here, why didn't they do this in steps and then give me the entire sample code? You know, step one, enable sign in and sign out. Step two, Gmail. And then at the end, the entire code that they have here. I feel like that makes a lot more sense. Whatever, I'm probably just stupid. It's fine. Number two, debugging. Let's talk about debugging. Oh! Oh. Or as I like to call it, console.log driven development. Oh wait, some of you don't use JavaScript. More like print driven development. Oh wait, you don't use Python either. Ah. More like C out driven dev- I hate bugs. Actual bugs and software bugs. Because it's literal proof that you can't code and you did something wrong. And debugging is the process of you fixing your terrible code. It's not fun. Debugging always starts slow. I don't know about most of you, but whenever I code with Python or JavaScript, I always just log everything out to debug. I don't really do breakpoints or anything like that, unless it's something really crazy or if it's a language like C++ where you have to compile and build the app, or if you really hate yourself, assembly. But for Python or JavaScript or really any small program, I just put a log wherever I think it's broken. And if that log didn't do anything, then I would just spam them everywhere. <laughs> and it works, all right? I know it's not just me who does this. You probably do it too. Don't look at me like that. We both can't code, but sometimes there's errors you don't expect. And when that happens, you'd think your programming language would come to save you and give you some helpful error message. I mean, you'll get an error message, but <laughs> you're going to get blessed by something like this. Yeah, what am I supposed to do? Number three, bug reports. If you ever make your project public and you have people using your bad code, then you'll probably have the pleasure of dealing with bug reports. Woo! Website's broken. That's the entire report. You ask them, what's broken? The thing. Which thing? You know, the thing that does stuff? <laughs> oh yeah, the thing that does stuff. That narrows it down to absolutely nothing. You know, it's like going to the doctor and telling them I don't feel good, but you don't tell them any symptoms. What are they gonna do? Which is why I always thought it would be amazing if we had a tool that would make bug reporting easier. Like imagine if you could show a recording of the bug you had and it would record not only the error, but also the console logs, the network requests, every step the user did, all the technical details, everything. And if you didn't know how to explain it, then AI would help you write a useful bug report so developers can actually understand it and fix it. Well, guess what? You don't have to imagine it anymore. With Jam, the sponsor of today's video. Oh, you sneaky. If you've ever wasted hours trying to understand a vague bug report, you're going to love this one. Jam is a browser extension that allows you to create the perfect bug report. Here's how it works. When someone finds a bug, they select the Jam browser extension. They can take a screenshot, record a video, or capture an instant replay of what just happened. Once Jam records everything, it'll 
instantly generate a link to share with your team. But Jam doesn't just record the screen. It captures everything a developer actually needs. Browser and device information, console logs, network requests, everything you need to fix the bug. But it gets better. You can use AI to write up the entire bug report, so you don't have to. As soon as you record a bug, AI will write a clear description of the issue and a list of steps to reproduce the bug. And since it has all the information a developer needs, it can even suggest a potential fix. It's like having an expert QA engineer on your team who speaks perfect developer. Jam also integrates with all your tools too. Jira, GitHub, Linear, Notion, Slack, whatever you use to track bugs. So instead of having these types of bug reports, you get this. Perfect bug reports every time. So if you want to stop wasting time with vague bug reports, you can try Jam for free by clicking the link in the description. Number 1.2 Google documentation again. I'm not done with Google. Let's take a look at how to do specific things like sending an email. Let's check this out. Now remember, I did the JavaScript quick start. So let's see how I can send emails with JavaScript. Wait a minute, there's no examples for JavaScript. What? Many programming languages have libraries or utilities that simplify the process of creating and encoding my messages. So why don't you share it? You know they exist. Where's the resources? Oh, 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 my mistake, Google. The following code examples demonstrate how to create a my message using the Google's API's client libraries for various languages. Oh, of course, you'd share the resources for your client libraries for various languages. <laughs> I can't even be that that mad about documentation because you know what i wouldn't write documentation to my code either <laughs> I guess I gotta look at the references and figure it out myself. The usual. Oh look, a video about the Gmail API titled The New Gmail API. I wonder when this video was made. The New Gmail 10 years ago. <laughs> what? You know, I would understand if it was a smaller company. Actually, smaller companies do have better documentation than this lobotomized trash. So what's going on over there at Google? And surprisingly, I know it's not just me who's having this problem. There's tons of people who complain about Google's documentation. It's so bad that people need to create packages to prevent people from suffering and reading that piece of garbage. Number four, inconsistent naming. Brrr. All right, look, let me tell you this. I didn't even know this was a problem until I started using different programming languages, but mainly when I started reading other people's code, I never realized how inconsistent naming is. Let's start with file names. I mean, how hard can it be to name a file? Here, take a look at this. You see the difference in each of these, right? Apparently one of these is right. I don't know which is right. Leave a comment on what you think is right. And it's not just file names either. This also applies for variable names. And you know, this wouldn't be such a problem, but every programming language has its own naming preferences. Why wouldn't they? Let me search up the name conventions and coding. Free code cam? Okay, I know it's a good source. Let's take a look at this. There's four of them. Camel case, snake case, kebab case, and Pascal case. Look at this. Free code camp actually talks about this. It's not just me. Now, based on the language you're working on and what you're naming, the preferred case type can change. Why? I just don't understand how something so simple like naming could be so hard. Then again, we just love to overcomplicate things. I don't know if there's lore behind these naming conventions. I don't know it. If you know it, please leave it in the comments because I'm not going to search that up myself. I would not be surprised if there isn't any lore behind this. And it's just opinion. I mean, there's a whole debate between tabs and spaces. Actually, that one I do understand. I'm more of a tab person. If you prefer using spaces, you need to go to the mental asylum. I don't know what to tell you. Number five, Vim. I just hate Vim. Number six, C++. I don't like C++. That's it. Number seven, the coding sloth. Wait, what? You know, I sure hate this coding sloth guy. He just makes YouTube videos on stupid stuff. I bet he can't even code. And then take a look at his stupid sloth character. This thing's ugly. Why would anyone watch? Number eight, sloth likes. Not only do I hate the coding sloth, I also hate his stupid newsletter, Sloth Bytes. It's a newsletter where he shares bite-sized programming information every week to make you a better programmer. All you have to do is enter your email and you just get free information. You know, and the content is good, but I just hate it because I hate him. If you didn't know that was an advertisement, go check out Sloth Bytes, please. Number nine, other programmers. I don't even like myself. Why would I like other programmers? Number 1.3, I have problems with Google. Here's a funny thing. The quality of Google's documentation depends on what you're using. Let's take a look at their ads. API. You know, a service that makes them a lot of money because it's ads? Wow. Video tutorials that aren't 10 years old. Step-by-step -step instructions. Libraries and examples. Look at the languages this supports. They support Perl. Perl. Why can't they do this for all their API? And then take a look at their Angular documentation. This is peak. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. This is what I expect from a $2 trillion. Yeah, so that's some things I hate about programming. You know, a lot of them are just skill issues. There's probably a lot more things I hate, but I'm too lazy to edit. So uh, bye.